When Papa got sick, we took him to the hot springs. And there I met a young lady just like me. Her father was a slave trader, and she told me this story. Once her Papa was auctioning off a woman, and he led her up to the auction block, showed off her teeth and her face and her muscles, said she was pretty enough to work in the master's house, strong enough to work in the fields. And also, she had just had a baby, so she had paid for herself after a little bit. Well, the bidding started. It got higher and higher and higher and higher. <laughs> Sold. And then she was left off, led off the auction block. A few minutes later, she found out her baby had been sold to someone else. And that woman, she dropped down and died right then and there. Died of a broken heart. I'll never forget that story, and I heard that over 40 years ago. Slavery. Oh, what an evil, evil thing. On April 17, 1861, the Virginia legislature voted for Virginia to leave the Union. And I watched from my front porch the Union flag with its 34 stars being lowered from the government building. And in its place was raised the Confederate flag with its stars and bars. And I swore right then and there, I'd do whatever I could to help bring the Union back together again. When I went back to Libby Prison, where the Union soldiers that were captured were staying, we had passed out books last time, and this time when I went back, one of the officers came to me, and he handed me back the book I had given him. He said, that was a mighty fine read, lady. Thank you very much. Make sure you take that book home and look over it carefully. Find any marks in it, you let me know and I'll pay for it. I told him not to worry about it, but he insisted. So that night, when I got home, I took the book. And I looked through it. it, looked fine. But then my hand ran over the back of one of the pages. There were bumps on it. I looked closer. Certain letters had pinpricks underneath it. I quickly grabbed a piece of paper and a pen, and I started going page by page through the book, writing down the letters that had marks on them. It took me all night. But by the end of the night, in the morning, I had a list of every prisoner in Libby Prison, and I had information about where Confederate soldiers were positioned that they had seen on their march down to Richmond. I knew this information was critical for the North. And so I sent it North. That was the beginning of my spying for the Union Army. Whenever I could, I would bribe doctors to declare certain soldiers in the prison too sick to stay there. And when they were moved to the hospital, I could more easily talk to them, and pass information back and forth. One way I did it is I had a special pot that I could bring food in. The top part I'd put the food in, and underneath was a place to put hot water to keep it warm. But I never put in hot water. I'd smuggle messages, or messages would be smuggled out to me in that hot water compartment. But one day, I heard that the prison guard at the hospital was checking everything going in and out. So I filled that hot water part with boiling hot water. I took my shawl and I wrapped my hands around the pot as I carried it in. That prison guard said, let me look at that. So I handed it to him without my shawl. Ah, that's hot. And he spilled that boiling hot water all down his clothes. 
You should have heard him cuss. He would have embarrassed the devil. But he never searched any of my things again. The trick was getting messages to other spies or north without being caught. So I had to devise special ways. And one way I did it was I would blow out of an egg the center part, the yolk, and then through the tiny hole I would slip messages into the eggshell. Then that blowing out egg would be put in a basket with other eggs. And then one of my servants would take the basket of eggs to wherever the message needed to be delivered. That way, if they were stopped and they were asked to look in the basket, all they'd see was eggs. <laughs>